Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the basics of mobile devices. Today we're going to be talking about some of the basic features of the mobile operating system and some things that differentiate the hardware of the mobile device from a standard IT device. And with that, let's begin this session. We begin by talking about basic features of the mobile operating system. And as I'm sure you're aware, Google's Android and Apple's iOS operating systems make up the vast majority of the mobile marketplace. There are other players, but they don't have near the reach and influence of Apple and Google. So let's start by talking about the Android operating system. It's open source. The operating system can be modified by anybody within the licensing agreement. Android can be placed on any hardware, so vendors can create their own Android devices. Apps and programs are available for Android all over the place. Google Play is the largest source, but you can get them from other sources. Apple's iOS, on the other hand, is closed source. It's only available from Apple and cannot be modified. You are limited in your hardware options to only those that are supplied by Apple. And you can only get apps from the Apple App Store. Now let's move on to a brief discussion of Windows. Windows does have a mobile operating system. It's closed source as well. It's only available from Microsoft. But your hardware options are more than what's available with iOS, as vendors can create their own devices. Your only readily available source of apps is from Microsoft, though. So it's kind of a combination of the open source and the closed source ecosystem. So let's talk about common operating system features. And we begin with screen orientation. Mobile devices can determine the orientation of their screen, either landscape or portrait, through the use of an accelerometer and or gyroscope. That means as you turn the screen sideways or upright, it'll flip so that the orientation remains correct. All modern mobile devices have GPS capability built into them. That means they have global po positioning system capability. This allows the device to know where it is, and some apps will use this to improve their functionality. Now let's talk about geo-tracking. It's similar to GPS, but it uses cell towers to track and log device movement. Now if geo-tracking is enabled, digital forensic specialists can use this information to track the movement and history of a device. Some apps are available that make this tracking easier, and a lot of parents actually enable geo-tracking on their children's phones so that they can tell where their children are. Almost all mobile operating systems have a way of calibrating their screens. This is not the issue that it once was, but every once in a while a touchscreen may need to be recalibrated, so you should follow the device's instructions on how to do this. Now let's move on to some of the differences between mobile devices and their larger cousins. Now mobile devices provide a smaller form factor for the user. That's what makes them mobile. This smaller form factor has led to some changes in the hardware used from that in their larger cousins. Now one of the first differences in mobile devices is they usually don't have field serviceable parts. And because of that, they're difficult to take apart unless you have specialized equipment. Most of the components that make up a mobile device are soldered in place. Unfortunately, that's becoming more common in some laptops, especially the Ultrabooks. Also, with a mobile device, they are not upgradable. What you bought is what you get. Now, all mobile devices do come with some form of solid-state drive. That's because a spinning disk would not be suitable for a mobile device. They just couldn't take the shock. Almost all mobile devices come with a touch interface, and that comes with several things involved. Most of these touch interfaces can sense when they're touched in more than one place. This allows for the pinch and zoom functions on mobile devices. Mobile devices also have touch flow. 
That means that they can sense when a user has moved their finger along the screen. This allows for the dragging of objects and the scrolling of the screen. Now that concludes this session on the basics of mobile devices. We talked about some basic features of the mobile operating system and some of the hardware differences that make a mobile device a mobile device. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure we'll do some more.